Okay. So yeah. Oh, this one. Correct. Here it is. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to thank, say thank you to WPI and Professor Palavan for inviting uh, Qualcomm to be involved with this event. We're have, very happy to be one of the sponsors and. Uh, Really, it's, it's great to have this group of uh, industry leaders together, so thank you. Um, so I, I want to step back a bit and give a little bit more higher level view of, of, of the overall context for location, and in particular indoor location. Got about 10, 12 slides going through them. It's, it's really to give a, a sense of the opportunity here that we have together as, a, <clears throat> as an industry. So one of, one of the things is, is certainly to, to keep in mind really the biggest context, I, I think, that, that we all have is, is the smartphone. And, and what's happened with smartphones and the transitions from feature phones to smartphones all, over, the, over the last number of years has been truly amazing. And really the smartphone now has put the consumer in the center. Um, so with the result that you know, it, it's impacting operators who've increased their, number, their percentage of smartphones, both in the US and worldwide. The handset makers themselves have greatly increased. In some cases, many of them have phased out their feature phones. I think that there's been some public statements from companies like Sony Ericsson that they're essentially their entire portfolio would be smartphones and developers. I, I think there's a number like by 2016, there'll be 100 billion mobile apps or, or something on, the, on that order. And really, it's all about making the consumer the center having this easy to use, rich user experience that, that's consumer centric and consumer focused. And of course, location is a part of that. And the numbers are, 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 are really staggering. Um, I think in, uh, uh, it's two and a half billion smartphones to be shipped cumulatively between 2011 and 2014. That's a number from Gartner. Um, the percentage of smartphones has gone from less than 15% to more than 45%. Clearly, there's still a big emerging uh, emerging markets in, in the developing world that are you know, primarily super low cost, voice only. That's also an important market too. Um, but for, for, for probably the focus in, the, in, the, in this room, it, it's really this, this scale is what's very exciting in terms of uh, making these devices context aware and location capable. And essentially, a very high percentage of these devices have, have cellular, GPS, Wi-Fi, other short range connectivity technologies, which all can be leveraged to do location better. And, and really what, what we see, I think from a Qualcomm perspective, a number of years ago, people in Qualcomm had said you know, that we wanted the wireless internet to exceed the wired internet. And it, it's actually happening. It, it, it's really amazing. So we have these devices that are you know, always with us, real time. And of course, the real time has a lot of uh, implications and benefits from the cellular technologies. We're now, we're now seeing LTE be, being rolled out, getting high tens of megabits per second to a mobile device when you're moving, which is, which is incredible. Context aware, in a broad sense, and of course, location is a very important part of that. It's not the only part of it. Uh, use of sensors, use of other kind of context applications really make the device uh, you know, really special in terms of its awareness of what the user and consumer is doing. Leverage is cloud services. Uh, in many ways, app stores, many other kind of uh, uh, information sources in the cloud, and it's, it's highly personalized. And of course, the apps uh, are, are one way to do that. Um, so it, it's, re it's really shifting to what this slide is, a, a, a carry-along experience with location is an absolutely central piece of it. And from, you know, from I guess part of the, 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 the view that we have is that location is an absolutely central part of that context aware smart device, smartphone user experience. We've we're seeing many new use cases. Again, always connected, always on, much greater need for personalization and content. The technology advancements, and I'll talk a little bit more about them shortly, and of course today we're going to hear a lot more about them. It's not just GPS, it's not just Wi-Fi, it's a hybrid of many positioning sources. Getting greater accuracy outdoors and indoors, fully leveraging all possible kinds of assistance information in the cloud. Um, and as was already mentioned, we're seeing the emergence of new indoor and business models leveraging, loca leveraging location. I think one of the analysts has said uh, global LBS revenue more than $10 billion by 2015. And what we're seeing is, um, as well as, of course, the technology providers, the carriers, the app developers, it's also advertisers, retailers, entertainment venues, 
all trying to monetize location in more advanced ways and, and more innovative ways. So it's really, it's a great time to be working in location technology. I think we all have a tremendous, uh, we're lucky to be, to be in this industry right now. 10 years ago, I, I guess as m many of you know, it was really few dedicated devices, much more focused on single point fixes, emergency services, and people, um, people's expectations adopted to the technology limitations. Whereas now, it's much more about converged devices, uh, unlimited, entertainment and, and social apps, and really uh, people just want quote unquote GPS to work everywhere, outdoors, indoors, in transitions, all over the world, uh, in, in any application. And I think uh, 66 million mobile apps to be downloaded by 2016. A large percentage of them, as already mentioned in earlier presentations, have location embedded, not explicitly, but implicitly, where location is really part of the overall mobile user context. So from a, as we think about business models going forward, um, of course, you have all these uh, groups here seeking to monetize LBS. I think certainly the, the venues are going to play an increasingly, increasingly important role, which is perhaps different from the outdoor, um, outdoor um, application. I think some of the, as well of course of making the device richer from a user perspective, a lot of the um, analytics, data mining, um, applications that run on, on top of a, of, of a location platform are, are gonna become extremely important. So there's both a, a business model for a venue owner or, 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 a, or a site owner, as well of course as for the user, as well as for the mall owner, and of course still a very important role for operators as well. Um, so I guess some of the, the benefits for this location awareness, um, completely new apps will, will evolve. And I think to, to, to the extent we have spoken to uh, a large number, number of app developers, just uh, there is, in our view, an insatiable demand for that higher accuracy. And we already have a, a reasonable course accuracy from cellular, Wi-Fi, but getting that, as we call it, very um, small blue dot on an indoor map is something that app developers have told us is extremely valuable. And many of these business models and use cases have already been formulated uh, and, and are just waiting for the technology providers to deliver that. Um, um, so immediate me measurement of validation and also the benefit to influence behavior. Yeah, again, we put there's a tie-in from the user to the site to the, to, to, to the app developer. So again, I think we're really at the very beginnings of this. A lot of room for both business and technology innovation. So really our, our view is the next frontier is, is what we're calling precise indoor location. And in many, in, in many sense that, that really means also site specific um, uh, indoors. Right now we, we have actually on, on our platforms and other, other people's platforms quite good ubiquitous uh, location, both in, in indoors and outdoors. Even more than 10 years ago, Qualcomm had a technology called uh, AFLT, which does ranging from cell towers. We're building on that. We're also using Wi-Fi, like everyone else in the industry. So that problem of, let's call it coarse, ubiquitous location is largely solved. Of course, there's still power consumption optimization, uh, op you know, other, 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 kind of op other kinds of optimizations, but it's really the precise indoor location, meaning low integer meters um, in, in, in as many indoor sites as possible that we see as the next big frontier, and we think it will enable a large class of new context aware applications in both public and private venues. So true indoor pedestrian navigation, tracking it, for example, one hertz, and a lot of other interesting use cases, look, uh, local services discovery, um, push advertising and context delivery, of course, with the user opt-in, uh, finding people, friend finder applications in a, in, a, in a building, and immediate consumer analytics where the mall and the store are part of the overall process. So a little bit more about the, the, the I, guess, I guess some of the use cases, certainly malls are very important, stadiums, where of course you could have both an outdoor indoor element as well, airports, train stations, campuses, entertainment, uh, theme parks, again, which have both a combination of outdoor, indoor, and the users really don't care. They don't care whether it's Wi-Fi or cellular or GPS or GNSS sensors. People just want the location to be there. 
um, s s I guess some of the, 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 the applications which in some sense feed on themselves, um, when you're in a, in, a, in a venue getting a, a, a service discovery announcement that tells you about certain things that are available in, the, in that venue, so new events, offers alerts in a familiar environment, orientation on context information in a, in a new environment, indoor discovery pushed to the user, showing places on a navigation path, personal recommendations. Again, it has to be balanced with a, a thoughtful user opt-in. Can't, you can't be that you're bombarded by indoor location ads when you're walking in a mall. That would be terrible. So some balance between a sensible opt-in, which we as an industry ha have to make sure that the, 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 the privacy aspects are, are managed. But the, the, the number of use cases is really amazing what can be done here. And again, what we've heard consistently from app developers is just make that indoor location work and the applications will take full advantage of it immediately. Um, so in terms of key requirements from, from um, some of the partners that we've spoken to as well as of our, our internal teams, certainly use cases. And certainly the, the, the navigation use case is important. It's not the only one. Uh, being able to couple indoor location technology with social networking, being able to do friend finder, push service discovery, context awareness, they're also, so it's a, it's a broader than just the, the single uh, um, one hertz tracking indoors, which in, in itself would be an amazing uh, achievement. Performance, um, meaning uh, fast responsiveness, low power, being able to have this context awareness always on. So we, we need to get to a point where the device is, has, a, has a, a sense of its own location to say less than 10 meters at a small percentage of the phone um, idle, idle current. In that case, these, all these applications can actually reside on the phone constantly. Um, so certainly having something that's significant, significantly less than 10 meters is, is, is very important. Scalability, meaning it can, it can be deployed easily in venues. It doesn't necessarily mandate a large amount of additional infrastructure. Uh, it can take advantage of existing infrastructure in the same way that many of the existing outdoor technologies take advantage of existing infrastructure, which is there already for data communications, but is leveraged for location technology. Um, ability to, 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 to scale, to, de to deploy easily, and, um, and of course cost so that there's not a big infrastructure cost to a site or, or, or developer. Um, the privacy aspect is extremely important. Um, so that needs to be managed both from the, the device side, handset maker side, technology provider side, venue side, mobile OS side. There has to be a consumer buy-in if there's any kind of data sharing that needs to be done because I think none of us want our companies to be across the front of the Wall Street Journal or New York Times for violating user privacy. So, and in fact, uh, that in some cases can also in influence architecture quite a bit and me making sure that the full support for privacy and um, is there. Um, for example, many corporate venues would not necessarily want their access points to be, to be all over the internet. Standardization, and I certainly agree with what, what Ted was saying earlier, maybe, <coughs> maybe not quite the, the proposal that he mentioned, but broadly as overall standardization within our industry. Uh, I think there, may, there are many ways to do it, as we'll hear later from one of from Kirk and our team. There's also existing standards bodies which can be leveraged. But I think broadly, a standardization to make these indoor beacons available is, is definitely a good initiative. And, um, and then, of course, ecosystem support, meaning venues and, and app developers as well. So uh, I think these are, th these are some of the key elements that we think are, are very important. I think uh, we are, we believe, uh, you know, we have made progress to solving some of them, and um, there's still a lot of uh, opportunity for us as an industry. And really, it's, it's about an ecosystem. Uh, I think that's probably what I would leave, the thought that I would leave you all with. And that ecosystem uh, involves some of the traditional players in the mobile LBS market operators still have a very important role. Um, the mobile device vendors, of course, the technology providers, but then also now wireless line infrastructure providers have a bigger, big, bigger role. Map providers have a very interesting role, I indoor maps and making those maps mm -hmm. available, standardizing those maps. Sy you know, system integrators uh, who may have relationships with venues. And um, so it's really, it's really all of those together 
we believe can, 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 can bring this uh, overall solution and allow this ecosystem to grow. So we are you know, certainly heavily involved with this. I think you'll see uh, some major announcements from Qualcomm later this year, uh, which will combine both partners and technology. And uh, so we certainly see the, the indoor location ecosystem and opportunity as a, as a very big one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, like, just we have 15 minutes.